What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the Adidas Futurecraft 4D. Is 3D printing technology the future of footwear? Let's find out. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet and you want to see more sneaker reviews just like this one. Also make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler for sneak peeks about upcoming reviews. First off, I want to give StockX a huge thank you for sponsoring this video. Not only that, but StockX and I have partnered up to give away $350 in credit to their website. With $350, you can get some really great verified authentic sneakers that you might have missed out on, like the bread toe ones. Or if those kicks aren't your thing, you can put the credit towards something else like Pharrell's, Supreme, or even Yeezy's. But we'll get into how to enter the giveaway at the end of the video. In the meantime though, you should definitely check out StockX in the link in the description below. This review has been a long time coming. Some of you may not know that I actually went to college for industrial design and worked in that field for about five years. And one of the biggest innovations in industrial design over the last couple decades has been 3D printing. 3D printing allows you to rapidly prototype new concepts and ideas without actually having to fully manufacture them. So for example, I used to work for a design firm that actually created kitchenware. So if we had a new concept for a handle or a kitchen tool, rather than actually having to carve the prototype out of foam or wood, all we had to do was build the prototype in a 3D program and then send it to the 3D printer which would usually print it in about two or three hours. This technology obviously revolutionized the way that products have been designed. However, because of the brittle nature of the materials that 3D printers are able to use and also the amount of time it takes to actually 3D print something versus injection mold something, 3D printed products have never really become mass manufacturable. But that's why the Adidas 4D is such a groundbreaking product. The reason the Adidas Futurecraft 4D is called 4D and not 3D is because technically this midsole isn't 3D printed, at least not in the conventional way where a material is heated up and then slowly layered over top of each other until it builds up into the product. Sort of the way a regular inkjet printer works, except rather than just printing out a page, it prints over top of each other over and over. The way Adidas manufactures the Futurecraft's 4D midsole is through digital light synthesis. Rather than the midsole actually being printed in layers like a 3D printer, light is actually projected into a resin which hardens as it's hit with the light and then it's slowly pulled out of the resin over time. The process is still a little slow and that's why the shoe is so limited, but because of the way the midsole is designed and printed, it allows for complete customizability. The company's hope is that in the future someone can just walk into an Adidas store, have their foot scanned, and then have a completely customized midsole printed out for them right on the spot. That's definitely a long way off, but this is absolutely a step in the right direction. So without further ado, here it is, the Adidas Futurecraft 4D. This sneaker is so cool. Jumping right into the sneaker, the entire upper is made up of a one-piece prime knit construction. The shape of the upper is definitely reminiscent of the Ultra Boost, however, the prime knit is pretty different. The knit pattern is pretty similar to what you see on the Ultra Boost 1.0, except the overall feel of the prime knit is a lot thinner and a lot smoother. Not only that, but the ventilation holes on the toe are really, really wide and you can see straight through to your socks. So if you're not wearing a pair of socks that match with the upper of the shoe, it's kind of a weird look. Because the prime knit is a lot thinner, it is a lot stretchier and a little bit more breathable. Not that I thought that there was anything wrong with the Ultra Boost prime knit, it, but this is definitely a lot lighter. However, because of that, it's probably not as durable. Continuing up on the sneaker, you've got these flat black laces that weave directly through the prime knit. There's no fuse overlay around the eyelets like you'd expect from a shoe that doesn't have a cage. However, the knit does seem to get a little bit tighter around those areas, so it shouldn't be a problem. At the top of the tongue, you've got your Adidas running logo in silver. Inside the shoe, you've got a black padded sock liner that's very similar to what you have on the Ultra Boost. The padding goes pretty much all the way around the ankle area and provides some really nice comfort. From the lower half of the midfoot to the toe, there isn't any padding whatsoever. It's just pure prime knit which is fine because it does have a sock-like fit. Rounding off the inside of the shoe, you've got a black insole that says Futurecraft 4D, made in Germany. As for fit, the Futurecraft 4D only comes in whole sizes. I went true to size on my pair, and I've gotta be honest, it does seem to fit a little bit small, so if you are a half size, maybe go up half a size rather than going down. However, if you are a whole size, I'd probably suggest going true to size unless you have wide feet. It's a tad snug, but it's not bad. Continuing back on the sneaker, unlike the Ultra Boost, there is no cage. The midfoot area of the shoe is just a slightly tighter knit prime knit. You've also got the Adidas three stripes lightly printed on the midfoot in either a white or a gray. I can't really tell what color it was supposed to be because even if it was in white, it's printed so lightly that it's still coming out as a gray. Continuing back on the shoe, you don't have an external heel counter. All the heel support and lockdown you're gonna get is from a slightly stiffer internal structure. On the back of the shoe, you've got more prime knit in black and then this little tab that sort of acts as a pull tab if you need it. Moving down on the shoe, we get to the part that we're all here for, the 40 midsole. This midsole is unlike pretty much anything else on the market except maybe the Under Armour Futurist, which only really has a 3D printed midsole in the heel. Adidas went all out and 
gave the shoe a full length 40 midsole. The midsole is pretty glossy and comes in sort of a light or ash green. A lot of people have been asking if it's hollow all the way through because you can't actually see through it, but that's just because of the skeletal design of the midsole. You can't actually get any clear holes through to the other side. However, if you pour water through the shoe, it'll come out the other side no problem. The shape of the midsole pattern changes depending on which part of the shoe you're looking at. On the heel, the gaps are a lot more widely spaced to allow for more compression. The midsole is actually pretty flexible around the heel and you can squeeze it pretty easily. Whereas when you get up to the toe of the shoe, the pattern is a lot more dense and it's not very easily squeezed. You can't see what's going on in the middle of the shoe in the midsole because obviously you've got the top part of the shoe and then the bottom outsole is covered. But the midsole density changes throughout the shoe based on foot mapping to give you more support where you need it and more compression when you need it. Not only is the technology behind this midsole so cool and I'm kind of geeking out about it, but it also looks really great as well. This really unique skeletal design is just so different looking and so eye-catching. I love it. Now to the part I'm sure you guys are all wondering about. How does it feel? The short answer, it feels good. The longer answer, yes, it feels good, but it's probably not exactly what you're expecting. Going into it, I honestly kind of thought the midsole would feel like Boost, but I can tell you right now, it doesn't feel anything like Boost. When you step into the shoe, there is some flex, and it's probably better than most foam midsoles on a lot of sneakers. However, when compared to Boost or React, or even Hover for that matter, it's just not as soft. The heel is definitely the area that offers you the most compression, and you can feel it if you put all your weight on the heel, but the shoe definitely has more of a bouncy, responsive feel than a cushy feel. Like I said, it's still very comfortable, like it's not hard by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not crazy soft. I'm actually gonna wear this shoe pretty heavily over the next week or two and give you guys an update on how it feels. So by then it's possible that the midsole could break in a little bit more or maybe it just stays the same. I don't know, but we'll find out. Finally moving to the bottom of the shoe, you've got this Continental outsole in black. Unlike most Adidas sneakers, there isn't any cut throughs through the outsole and I'm assuming that's just so debris and dirt doesn't get into the 3D printed midsole. Instead you've got this shallow nub pattern that kind of has a little bit more traction on the high wear areas, but that's about it. To sum up, I think the Adidas Futurecraft 4D is one of the coolest sneakers to release in a really long time. Not only is the technology crazy innovative, but I also think the sneaker looks really, really good. Even though the midsole might not be as soft as I was expecting, it's still extremely comfortable and it's still a shoe that I definitely wear around every day. The Futurecraft 4D released over the last couple months in very limited numbers. There's rumors that Adidas might release more as they ramp up production, but if you can't contain yourself and want to grab a pair now, make sure to click the link in the description to grab a pair from StockX. You guys know what time it is, it's time to throw these guys on feet and see how they look. Thank you once again to StockX for sponsoring this video. If you guys are in the sneaker community at all, I'm sure you guys already know what StockX is. But if you don't, StockX is a great place to buy and sell sneakers. For buyers, it offers 100% guaranteed authentic sneakers. StockX's headquarters are in Detroit and they have real people checking over each one of the sneakers to guarantee that each one is authentic. I mainly use StockX for selling and for sellers, it offers really excellent tools like the trade range metric. This metric shows you the high end and the low end of what the sneaker is going for so you know exactly what you're gonna be getting. For example, the Futurecraft 4Ds 
retail price is $300, but right now it's selling on StockX between $661 and $987. So just from that metric, you can already tell that if you bought the shoe for retail, you're at least gonna double your money. As for the $350 credit giveaway, it's really easy to enter. All you have to do is install the StockX app from the link in the description below. Then make sure to follow at StockX and at StockX sneakers on Instagram. And finally, head on over to my Instagram where the giveaway post just went live and comment your size underneath it. And that's pretty much it. The winner will be selected randomly in one week and we'll announce the winner on Instagram. That pretty much wraps up the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to me, Seth Fowler, if you want to see more content just like this. And follow me in all other forms of social media. The links will be in the description below.